Nothing hurts more than losing your best friend, seeing them slowly replace you, hugging everyone besides you, avoiding you. It hurts. You want her to be happy, but you are only happy when you're with her. And then she talks about her problems with you just like she's never been avoiding you, replacing you right before everyone's eyes. You did everything for them. You did everything you needed to do for them. You grew up together and they just replace you with someone they just met. She's popular now. You made her popular and they just treat you like shit after everything you did for them. You helped her with her problems. You always put a smile on their face. You paid for them when they forgot their money. You made their homework for them. You helped them make friends. You made them popular. You got them a boyfriend. You comforted them when they were crying. You gave them your clothes when they couldn't fit. You played together as little kids. After all of that, she just replaces you like you're a fucking piece. What are you doing here, honey? You're not even old enough to know how bad life gets. Obviously, Doctor. You've never been a 13-year-old girl. Cecilia was the first to go. The monster's gone. He's on the run. And your daddy's here. You wonder why he is insecure. You wonder why he can't open up to you. You judge him for it, but put yourself in his shoes. He has trust issues because one girl after another lies to him, cheats on him, betrays his trust. He feels like shit, but you fail to see that. You fail to see what he is going through. He cries himself to sleep every night, waiting, hoping someone, anyone will text him to ask him if he is okay. He waits, but he never receives the text. All he can think about is why he isn't good enough. He gives everything to everyone, but doesn't ask or gets any. the other day I cried about someone I miss I cry a lot I cry very often I cry about the past I cry about what my future could be I cry about stress I cry about people I miss it's okay to cry it's okay to openly admit that you're not okay it's okay to cry in front of people because the right people will be there to support you my message is you don't have to bottle it up and let it overflow because that's the worst thing to do I've struggled with that for three years straight since someone very important in my life went away from me my life went very downhill and I cried a lot and I still cry now, but I'm not scared to express it or tell people about me crying. I'm not scared anymore to be judged. 
because 99% of the time you won't get judged. So just please, if you are young, old, man, woman, and you're scared to let your emotions out, just don't be. Because there's a lot of people in your life that care about you and want to make you feel on top of the world. They don't want you to be bottling this up. If they knew that you were doing that, they'd be very upset. I've had a lot of breakdowns to close people now and you know, they all know my story. They all know what I'm about. They all know what issues I deal with, you know, what I get sad at and they're there to comfort me now. So by not being afraid of letting your emotions out is such a strong thing to do. It doesn't make you stronger holding them in. Please just let them out, cry to someone, tell someone how you're feeling, you know, don't bottle that up. Don't bottle all, the, all these thoughts and negative emotions up because it's only gonna get worse and worse. You're not, you're not giving it space. So yeah, it's okay to cry, my friend. It's okay to be sad. Just let it out, don't trap it in. It's been cons. Peace out. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you've literally done everything you can and you're still battling? I mean, I've got an asthmatic heart and I've had a really shit day at work and all I want to do is just ride and just walk on him. That's all we're doing is walking and I just feel like every man and his dog is against me. I've got three children. I work full time. I get made to feel guilty because I work full time. I get made to feel guilty because I come and ride my horse, who is my only pleasure aside from my children. Do you just ever feel like you're just constantly battling? I suppose it's just Friday and I've had a really shit day in the office. But he's breathless. I've had to give him his nebulizer and you know, and you just feel like everything's going against you. I'm just having one of those days. <laughs> She fell in love with every guy she ever dated. Whether they were smart or stupid or sweet or cruel, it didn't matter. person that promise you I would you not think that affects someone mentally do you think that doesn't affect someone mentally There's so much I want to say, but I don't know where to start.
ties herself to sleep every night. She sits there waiting for someone to text her, thinking someone actually cares, when in reality nobody does. But when she vents, everyone says, oh, that's your problem, or makes it about themselves. That's why she stays quiet, because she has no choice but to hide it. Oh, no, no, I can't. 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 I No story can make me cry. There was two children playing together in one of one's their houses, and one of them said to the other one, We can't make too much noise because my dad will wake up. The other one said, Let's play at my father's grave and maybe he will wake up. talk about depression all the time the difference between depression and sadness is sadness is just you know from happenstance whatever happened or didn't happen for you or you know grief or whatever it is and depression is your body saying fuck you I don't want to be this character anymore your body needs to be depressed it needs deep rest from the character that you've been trying to play right you know reveals that small children who are treated badly by their parents will always, rather oddly, blame themselves and not their parents for their injuries. They hate who they are rather than hating those who've done them wrong. Small children immediately notice when they're not loved as much as they might and need to be. They understand nothing of the reasons for this hard-heartedness, but they feel all of the pain. And yet they need to locate some kind of explanation nevertheless, and so they quickly and intuitively settle on one that almost always feels most compelling to them, that they have done something wrong. Why is mummy so agitated? Because they've done something wrong. Why is daddy so cold? Because they've done something wrong. Why aren't they being treated kindly? Because they've done something wrong. Why is their little sister being preferred to them? Because they've done something wrong. reveals that small children who are treated badly by their parents will always, rather oddly, blame themselves and not their parents for their injuries. They hate who they are rather than hating those who've done them wrong. Small children immediately notice when they're not loved as much as they might and need to be. They understand nothing of the reasons for this hard-heartedness, but they feel all of the pain. And yet they need to locate some kind of explanation nevertheless, and so they quickly and intuitively settle on one that almost always feels most compelling to them, that they have done something wrong. Why is mummy so agitated? Because they've done something wrong. Why is daddy so cold? Because they've done something wrong. Why aren't they being treated kindly? Because they've done something wrong. Why is their little sister being preferred to them? Because they've done something wrong.
Girls Camp Peppermint Patty. I finally saw the little red-haired girl that Chuck is always talking about. And you know what I did? I cried, Linus. I cried and cried and cried. Two, two, one, two. You just have to show up. Show up. Yes. Show up. Yes. I fucking showed up for you. I showed up. I was standing there for you. Oh, fuck you. Oh, no, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Just make it stop. You need to make it stop. It hurts. <laughs>